in trees mirrors the strong, not weakness, of humans by being green inside. Sometimes we're white outside. Some- Ladies, gentlemen, them, they, and all, it's showtime! <laughs> Although uh, when we do say showtime, uh, we, we do use that term very loosely as what we've got in store for you today. Well, uh, uh, our presenters have really no idea what they're going to say because they're all unprepared. So strap yourselves in and brace yourself as the Some Nobodies present PowerPoint Showdown. So I'll start that round of applause as we welcome this week's keynote speaker. Ooh, what an abrupt stop. Hello, and thank you for joining us for our conference. Now, tonight you're going to hear four professionals discuss our topic uh, beyond cryptocurrency. Now, with me, as always, we have Bob from Custodial, who's obviously the sweepstakes winner of last uh, year. I didn't know I'd get on the show. I thought it was just an audience ticket. You should just wait until I call on you. Uh, we also have Michael No Jokes Colby, and our our special guest speaker, we have Jason uh, from Three Geeks. How are you, Jason? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I cannot wait to talk about this. Yeah, and from what we see in your MySpace page, you know a lot about cryptocurrency, so we're pretty excited about this. And now, for those who are joining us for the first time, each speaker will be given 10 minutes to present their topic of the week, Beyond Cryptocurrency. And after each presentation, there'll be a short Q&A from the panel. And of course, we invite any member of the audience to ask questions as well. Now, after the fourth presentation, the panelists will vote uh, on which speaker will be awarded the $50,000 scholarship to Some Nobody's University and the Nostalgia Prize of the Week. And the Nostalgia Prize of the... Let me just open this up real fast. Oh, Jesus. This is stupid. Uh, okay, so apparently we have a uh, a lime green Chevy Camaro sweatshirt that is size medium. Huh. Okay, well, thank you to our Patreon members for sending that in. And once again, if you win, you get that and $50,000 grant money. Now, without some adieus, many are further, but some are past, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give our first presentation. So if we can go ahead and get my presentation up. Okay. Now, the thing that I really want to talk to you folks about today is that I definitely understand cryptocurrency. And what goes on beyond that, I also understand. What happened before cryptocurrency, I'm a little not too sure about. But we're going to get into how much I definitely understand cryptocurrency. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, let's recognize the real thing. One of these two things on the side here is real and one's not. Now, if you look on the top, you're going to see what looks like a drawn illustration of, I think, a bison. Uh, now, this is going to be illustration number uh, 29.7. Now, below that, what you're going to see is something pretty real, which is geometry. Uh, now, the thing about cryptocurrency that people don't realize is that some of it is real, some of it's not real. And it's not for us to decide what is real versus what's not real. We just got to see what the ones we can actually look at. Because that's how you know some things are real, and especially geometry. Next slide, please. Now, my very legitimate qualifications. Now, I'm going to go over this pretty in depth. Uh, you, obviously, you have the wine. Now, that we can look at as college. Uh, college is a time for partying. It's time for charcuterie plates. It's time for a solid deep red with some pretty thick tannins. Now, then you get to the dime. Now, once you get out of college, you have a little bit of cheddar in your pocket because you've accrued so much negative school debt. Now, you're going to start going out to dinners. You're going to go to an Arby's. You're going to go to a Taco Bell. And what you're going to do is while you're waiting for your order, you're going to make sure you tell everybody in line how much cryptocurrency you plan on purchasing, you already have, and make sure every single person there knows exactly what cryptocurrency is. Now, it's going to take you a couple paragraphs. So make sure even your food's ready, you still do it. Now, when we get over here at the end, now this is going to be the future of uh, my legitimate qualifications, which is obviously the 69. Um, now, 
when you look at astrology, you're going to look at uh, different things like the Pisces, uh, different kind of the, the yin and the yang, the to and the fro, the top and the bottom. Uh, lots of things that are really going to be happening with the 69. Um, but when you actually put all these together, the wine dine 69 is really the best qualifications for telling people exactly what is going to be beyond cryptocurrency. Um the 69 I'm actually very proud about. I'm currently going through that right now. I had to take a break from that to do this presentation. So next slide, please. Now, computer money is pretty good, but not like credit cards. Credit cards you can hold in your hand. You can hand to people and say, this might work. And they'll hand it back to you and say, come on, Zach, that probably does not work. You know that. Now, also little coins inside computers bonk around. Now, one of the best things about cryptocurrency is we don't think it actually is metal. We're not really sure what it's fully made of. Uh, we've tried mining it. We didn't really come up with anything. Uh, and we do shake our computers at the end of the day. There's nothing inside of it. So we're pretty sure that it's not little coins inside of a computer to bonk around, which is why we're trying to get away from paper money and regular metal money. Here's the thing, though. It's very complicated. You can't get too deep into technical explanations when it comes to just letting everybody know what it is. Because from what we understand, there is a finite amount of it. So if you start telling people what it is, they're going to start looking into it. And next thing you know, your mind card is empty and you're shaking around your, your laptop and there's no money inside of it. Next slide, please. Now, why people lose their shit over crypto? Now, this is something that I've had many, many TED Talks over. Uh, it seems like when I start telling people exactly what cryptocurrency is, right around the 45-minute mark, they really start losing their shit. Uh, and I tell them, like, hey, this is a Taco Bell. This is a public domain. Like, we're allowed to be in here. Maybe you should leave me out of my space if you don't want to know what this is. Now, this is one of the people that I came across over here in figure one. This is a normal person that reacts uh, when someone says, hey, you want to talk about cryptocurrency? Now, they look at you with certain things, and you're going to notice, uh, and A, you're going to notice a raising of the eyebrows. Because at first, they're going to feel pretty stupid because they obviously do not know what cryptocurrency is. Then you're going to notice in the B area, the eyes are going to squint slightly because they're going to first think you're going to sell them something. But what you don't understand or what they don't understand is you're about you're trying to give them something, which is almost too much information on cryptocurrency. Now, when you look in the C area, you're going to see that these brows are going to furrow down. Now, that's letting you know that they feel inferior to you and that you definitely should just keep on talking. Really, just grab the bag out of the hand and make sure you're making direct eye contact with them. Now, if you really pay attention to the D, which I do not, uh, but if you had to really pay attention to the D, in the middle, you're going to see this little part of the face here which is where you need to pinpoint your attention when you're giving people all the explanations of what cryptocurrency is. You need to stare at them right in their third eye because that's where the banks are, I'm pretty sure. Now, next slide, please. Now, which cryptocurrency is right for you? There's a lot out there. You have the A, which makes up at least eight, uh, which is right around 11%. You have the B, which, you know, you can do a little bit of B, splash with A. You can get your C in there. What you do not want to do is you do not want to get all four of these together because that's going to give you a 0%. And when you can look at this little part right in the middle, those 0%, those are the amount of people that do not want to talk to you when it comes to giving the information uh, and giving them what they need to know to get the cryptocurrency. Now, once again, when you're in the D area, things are going to be a little bit kind of tight. Uh, it's going to be real swollen and pink, and you're not really going to want to play around in there. What I suggest is staying right around the C area, because what that's going to do at the peak of cryptocurrency, you're going to have 16 people staring at you, which is roughly 23.9% of the Taco Bell that I'm usually talking to people when I'm trying to sell them my cryptocurrency. Unfortunately, I have to tell them what it is before I can sell it to them, but... They have to trust me or something. They have to trust somebody anyway. Next slide, please. Now, how to spend your cryptocurrency. A lot of people think it's like electric money, and that's not far from it. But you don't keep it in the outlets. And yeah, it is electric, boogie, woogie, woogie. Uh, but you just can't find it all over your house. Uh, now, what you can do is you can find the crypto uh, uh, tension rods, which you can obviously hold the red one in your hand, and you can kick the green one into a, the outlet if you really want to 
fall into lawsuits to try to work on an easy way to get their cryptocurrency. But what we really suggest is putting a frown on your face and just opening up your digital wallet, uh, walking to the nearest Taco Bell and letting people know that you own at least three or four cryptocurrencies and then really inviting them to ask you questions on what it is. Next slide, please. Now, in conclusion, there are many different ways that you can look at somebody when trying to tell them what cryptocurrency is. And as someone who is very intelligent like myself, you know, you're going to see people and they're going to, their, their lips are going to start twitching because they don't fully understand it. They're like, what do you mean? It's not paper. So don't look at their lips. You can look at their nose for a little bit if you want to, but honestly, that nose is going to start looking back at you. Now, the brow is an easy place to look at because no one really knows what you're looking at. They think you're looking at the left eye, but you're actually looking at the right eye. Nobody really knows. The problem is that it is just your duty to give people as much information about cryptocurrency as possible. You really have to just shake the windows at your Wendy's and tell people, why are you using this paper cloth money? That's not how things are going to work soon. What you need is cryptocurrency. And that's when all eyes are on you because you're the popular guy at the uh, at the Wendy's. So that's pretty much what I need to tell you about telling other people about how much I definitely understand cryptocurrency. And I hope that you see now that I totally understand what this is and why and where you should look at people's faces. And I'd be more than happy to take any and all questions about how much I definitely understand cryptocurrency. Oh, Jason, with the quickness. Yes, this question has been bothering me since I heard your presentation on it. And I'm really wondering, your very limited, your legitimate qualifications, have you ever done all three at the same time? Have you ever wine dined and 69 No, uh, it, it, is, it is quite a feat to, to manage all three of those at once. I heard about somebody who went to Howard uh that technical school in delaware and they managed it uh i've tried whining and 69 and i've tried dining and whining i've tried 69ing and dining uh and two of those things are somewhat easy when i try to put the third one in there i realize that my mouth is a little too full to actually explain to people how much i know about cryptocurrency so i mean i suggest i mean if you can get all three absolutely I can only manage to while still explaining to people how much I definitely understand cryptocurrency. No, two, two's a, two's a, yeah. Two, two's good for me. Uh, oh, yeah. Our, our sweepstakes winner, Bob from Custodial. Yeah, thanks. Oh, you called on me. Okay. Um, so you claim that you understand cryptocurrency. Um, I, totally, I definitely understand it. Right. I was wondering if you could give just like a baseline explanation of how the blockchain works just for the folks in the audience who don't quite understand how, what that means. Yeah. So you sound like one of the people that I randomly come across at like an Arby's or a Dairy Queen. And they say I to mean, me, yeah. Zach, what's up with this blockchain? And I say, listen, I definitely understand cryptocurrency. Now, if you just give me 10 to 15 minutes and sit down and let me talk about this, I will be more than happy to tell you about this. And if you want, we go back through all the slides again and tell you my qualifications on how I do the whining and the dining and also uh, I do incorporate the 69. Um, now, the thing is that what you have to understand is that it, it's up to the people to, ex to, to really just expand the knowledge of what this is. Now, because I definitely understand this, I'm able to tell everyone at any fast food restaurant that I come across exactly what it is. So very good question. Uh, okay. I was only given one question, so I guess it's going to have to do. Uh, yes, Michael, no jokes, Colby. Uh, yeah, I also have a question that has nothing to do with cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Um, you said that at the college that you went to, mm -hmm. um, it, you had charcuterie and wine. Mm -hmm. Um, it, are you trying to tell me that the only people who can afford, uh, to play around in the cryptocurrency space are... Uh, little rich boys um, who who have wine and charcuterie and not natty light and bologna like I did in college. Oh, hey, that's oh. not bad. No, that's actually not bad at all. But no, what I'm trying to tell you is my qualifications and what I've done to make sure that I definitely understand cryptocurrency. Now, once again, when I want to explain to other people, 
exactly what I know about cryptocurrency, I go to an Arby's, I go to a Dairy Queen, I go to a Sonic, because that's the people that really don't know the most. So I will say while you're sitting there chomping on your fried bologna and your old stale mustard, uh, I'll be more than happy to explain to you uh, exactly how much I definitely understand cryptocurrency. So no, no, just because I had a very comfortable and exciting college experience for me to learn exactly about cryptocurrency doesn't mean that everybody has to do that no uh and just for future reference mm -hmm. uh natty light and baloney uh very much easier than whining and dining went while you're 69ing yeah but there's really no third thing that rhymes with that so oh, baloney and natty light and 69 that rhymes does not rhyme i know what a rhyme is it rhymes uh, figuratively okay thank yeah. you no jokes and custodial uh now let's go back to jason with another question i got one last question and it's just because i'm taking notes during this whole presentation is what did the a b c and d stand for the a B so those are different kinds of blockchains now because i definitely understand all of cryptocurrency i didn't want to overwhelm the panel or even all the guests here uh what they are now the a b c d these are just the most obvious ones you have your bitcoin you have your ditcoin you have your sitcoin and you have your ajit coin uh now there's other ones obviously now you're going to get to the calf coin the doge coin uh, all the way down to the zit coin uh, but really what's important is to understand that you do not want to mix many of these especially with the d um but yeah it, it's it's pick one and just go with it really i mean it's because i totally understand cryptocurrency that i can give this graph to you but excellent question though uh bob from custodial do you have anything else you'd like to say I I think someone in the audience has their hand raised. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah. I will take any audience questions. Okay. Uh, smart Zach. Um, do you think widespread uh, adoption of decentralized finances will spur the return of the crypt keeper? Mm, what a great question. Now I understand more than one thing I do. I definitely understand cryptocurrency. I also understand the crypt keeper. And I will say that, uh, no, I, I don't think that a widespread, uh, uh adaptation or uh, adoption of anything will bring the crypt keeper back because the crypt keeper never left. <laughs> they are over there in the backyard, just laughing at you incessantly. Uh, but thank you, Blue Shoe Nick, for that. Uh, also, that's just where I keep my grandmother, who we also call her uh, Crypt Keeper. Uh, it's like an in-law suite, but I guess it's like a shit. Um, but yeah, so that is the end of my presentation, and I don't think there's any more questions. Now, we have roughly three more adus, and without any of them, we're going to bring up Mr. Jason Taylor. Uh, Jason Taylor, let's see what he has here. Crypto, oh, no. This is some of the uh, things that you just say, oh, no, when you hear the word crypto. Probably not the way to go. You know, you don't want to just get certain things in crypto. Like uh, you got to use crypto for NFTs, and that might be a no-no. Like, who wants that? Who wants a digital piece of art? Not me. I don't. That's a crypto oh, no. Uh, next slide, please. First, I need to teach you what cryptocurrency actually is. It is uh, Bitcoin, payment, cryptocurrency, digital mining. What do these things mean? They, It's kind of like playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> when you get all your buddies together and you go out and you raid. You go in, you you got to mine for gold in the game. That's what you do on here. You go online, you go to www.mining.com, and you uh, sign in with your buddies. Uh, and, yeah, you just sit there and you guys mine for, for imaginary, I mean, real currency, cryptocurrency for all of us to uh, buy on things. Next slide, please. Crypto is dead. Guess what's next? Bottle caps. No, nah, I don't think so. Toenails? Eh, probably not. Everybody's got them. Animal furs and maybe human. Who doesn't want to walk around with a nice human fur? Like, I, I could walk around in a nice Zach hat. Like, how awesome would that be? You can just see Zach's head on top of mine and you wonder where I got such a thing. Well, it's kind of like an NFT, right? There's only one Zach. There's only one Zach hat that you can buy. I can get that now with the cryptocurrency or, you know, whatever's next. Uh, next slide, please. What do I do now that I don't know what to do? Well, no one really knows. That's a good, that's a deep, deep question. 
and it really takes to the heart of it. Like, what what do you do now that you don't know what to do? Obviously, like I said, you buy buy human hats. Why not? Uh, you take all of the 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 stuff you've bought throughout your life. You just set it all on fire because who needs it anymore? You don't because you can buy NFTs now. NFTs are the way to the future. How do you get it? No one knows. Nobody knows how to actually purchase an NFT, but that's neither here nor there because no one really knows. Like it's out there for all of us to purchase and enjoy, but where is it really? Can anybody really see it? Can you have friends over? Can you guys sit down and stare at it? No, because no one really knows how to access it because it's just, it's there. And it's like looking for things like gold, comics, and teeth. Where do you find those things? Well, you steal it from your neighbors. Steal their laundry off their clothesline as well. Next slide, please. Will money still work? Hell no. We don't need money anymore. We burnt that all with all of our stuff. We don't because everything we own now is on the computer. Yes, it's on the computer because computers are 100% safe. Nobody needs to worry about a virus or a hacker anymore. No, that stuff is in the past. Who needs money? Because when you have money, what happens? People steal it out of your pocket. And what's good is that? Or they rob a bank and all your money's gone. But now you have it on this secure website that has it. And nobody can get into it unless they go through a tunnel to the side where they can slide in. It's kind of like sliding into a DM, but only you're sliding into this crypto safe, as it were. And then they could take it that way. But, you know, that's that's hard to get to. It's a four-letter password. I mean, the password is the word word. But that's not the point. The point is money doesn't work. We don't need it. Look for old weapons or cannons to smelt. <laughs> Try and trade pogs now. Why not trade pogs? Pogs could be a currency because why the hell not? <laughs> Next slide, please. Paper money is translated in 90 languages and has been used since the 1100s AD. But where was crypto then? That's a good question because paper money is basically useless. I mean, we got like they it says in the, the slide that I wrote, it says paper money is in 90 languages why why do we need 90 languages why can't people in korea use a dollar like it's so much easier for me to go to korea with my dollars you know so what they don't know who george washington is is that on me that's not on me like why can't i use my dollar over in korea but the question is where has crypto been and crypto has always been on the internet and we didn't know about the internet until recently and that is why we can now burn all that money and celebrate and run around without pants on because of cryptocurrency and I can't think of a better reason to get rid of your money than running around with no pants on and screaming crypto. Just a quick tip. Just because you don't speak the same language doesn't mean money won't work. Most cops in all countries will take paper bribes. Absolutely. Some some of those paper bribes are worth more depending on where they're from than others. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's all paper. Like, why can't it be worth the same? Like a hundred dollar bill, you're telling me it's better than a one dollar bill? I don't think so. It's the same size, shape, different head on the top of it. What makes George uh, Washington worse than Benjamin Franklin? I think all those guys had problems. So why can't the money address it? We all have dollars. Let's spend it. But uh, next yeah. slide, please. Two examples of failed crypto. Chicken bird feather. Who wants chicken bird feather? Like Those make you itchy and they smell funny after a while. No, no. Too easy to counterfeit. There's turkeys. We could steal a turkey feather. You wouldn't know the difference. Old baby bones. Couldn't find enough old babies. Like, who's just throwing babies away? I mean, I guess I could go down to a local dumpster, maybe in the hood, and find a baby. But I don't want to do that because that's gross. It's not a good sense of cryptocurrency. And my personal favorite, a stick figure. Why not? Stick figure is great. We can draw them. We can hand them out. It's trust me, a stick figure is worth as much as the faces on all of the money across the world. What makes a stick figure worse than anybody else? Who says a stick figure can't be represented in the same way as George Washington? That right there is figurism, and I am not one to figurism. Next slide, please. In conclusion, don't be like Sonic. Look at Sonic. He's exhausted. He's tired. Why? He's trying to figure out what the hell cryptocurrency is because nobody can really tell him. And he doesn't know where to find the NFTs. Like, Sonic has now become an NFT brand, and he doesn't even know where to go to be that NFT. Poor Sonic. Like, we're putting animated characters out of work. Do we really want to do that? Just remember what I said. Stick figures are just as good as human people. And any questions from the panel? Uh, yes, Michael. Yeah, I had a question. Um, 
I mean, that picture that you kept calling a stick figure, um, that is the cryptocurrency uh, symbol for old babies. Um, I don't, I, I thought you were an expert on this, uh, but I was just wondering uh, what constitutes an old baby? A old baby is one that's just been around for a while. Like after <laughs> six months, it's old. Like who wants that baby around anymore? It's not as cute. It smells. It yells. It cusses. It part po- poops. It's not the poop's not cute anymore at six months old. Like who yeah. wants that? The baby's not just drinking milk anymore. It's not just like a little puddle. It's all over the place. An old baby would be six months old. And I called it a stick figure just to symbolize that. You know, any illustration is just as good as the illustrations we have on our money currently. Okay, uh, very good uh, question. How old? How old is like the the co- uh, you after six months? But until when? Oh, when they, they start walking, babies? throw them out. Throw yeah, them we out. Don't, we we don't okay. need that no more. All, All right, right, let me walk in. They write that they, down. They could run away. Yeah, who yeah. can use a baby that runs away as currency? Yes, Bob. Um, hi. I was born in 1998. What are pogs? Oh, pogs are these little stupid things that we used to collect. They they'd come. Nobody really like collected a certain brand of pogs. They were all over the place. So they made like Power Ranger pogs, but people would have like two of them, and then they'd have two like Coca Cola pogs, two like Satanic Demon pogs, and then you would get these things called slammers that are like metal uh, circular discs that you would throw on top of the pogs, and then whoever got the most on their side—I don't even remember how it worked—they <laughs> would get to keep the pogs that they want, and it got banned from a lot of schools because of gambling. So it is a lot Hell like yeah. cryptocurrency, like. Yes. Zach. All right. Now you did mention NFTs a couple of times. And I was curious, what does NFT stand for? It stands for non-functional toy. <laughs> a non-functional toy. Okay, perfect. And yeah, you, who wants a non-functional toy? It's a waste of money. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, we actually do have uh, a question from the audience. Uh, Blue Shoe Nick asked, Jason, how do you suppose crypto will affect the afterlife via non-fungible indulgences? It's easy. Uh, you can't see the afterlife. You can't see cryptocurrency. So the cryptocurrency just goes with you in the afterlife because unlike oh. seeing you, you can't. You can't see the money. They're together in hmm. magical space somewhere. Well, so Jesus yeah. was wrong when he said you can't take it with you. Okay. Yeah, he was way wrong. Apparently. Hell you can't yeah. Take the crypto yeah, that, that's a famous Jesus saying. Yeah. Can't, yeah. can't take it with you except crypto. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, Jason Taylor, thank you so much for spreading your wealth of knowledge on your non-functional toys and how it's going to fail in the future. Uh, Now we have a couple more adus, but we're going to just go ahead and get over those. Now up next, we're going to have, see, Michael No Jokes Colby. We can just go ahead and bring up hit. Perfect. Now, I I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying this, but it's been a while since we've done one of these so i don't quite remember how to be funny so if i'm not funny uh we're just gonna blame that on uh rustiness uh uh, even though i'm not going for jokes today uh i'm just gonna tell you straight down the middle about cryptocurrency and hopefully um hopefully i remembered to put something about nfts um in my presentation um so uh, we're going to be talking about tales from the crypto, um, which is cryptocurrency um, from the past, uh, I think, is what my presentation is. Um, so without further ado, uh, this will be the last to do that I have. Um, let's get to the next slide, please. Now. What exactly is cryptocurrency? I think my uh, peers here have talked about this and explained it in in pretty great detail. Mm -hmm. Um, Cryptocurrency is uh, money that's stolen from tombs, crypts, and cemeteries. Um, Mm. All all cryptocurrency is robbed from the dead. Um, I think this is a great idea. What do the dead people need with them anyway? Uh, they don't they don't need this currency so why not take it from them and use it for the living um, cemeteries is spelled with four e's um, who could have guessed that's where we got 
the name of the cryptocurrency Fories. Um, this includes uh, gold jewelry, embalmed pets, and pieces of the deceased, which, as you know, uh, because of how cryptocurrency works, uh, we take these things and we uh, we take the fung out of them um, so that they're non-fungible. Uh, and then we make little tokens out of them, which people use to buy uh, goods and services, uh, just like real money, except uh, this is more worthless. And stupid people love to trade it back and forth. Uh, it's it's great. Uh, bugs, are they worth it? Um, of course they are. Bugs are the most plentiful species on the planet. They're easy to catch. They're easy to take the fungi out of and turn into tokens. Um, so uh, the fact that bugs, you know, some people don't realize quite how much bugs are worth. Um, and that is something that we in the cryptocurrency community have been trying to keep out of the spotlight for a while now. Um, we don't want people to know um that that bugs are are worth quite so much um luckily nobody watches this show so nobody's gonna know um even after i i say it on the internet so uh if i could get the next slide please now my experience with cryptocurrency um you can see this is actually the process um with which we take the fung out of the embalmed pets. Um, it's it's very close to what we do with the rest of, you know, everything that I was talking about, the, the parts of the corpses, uh, the jewelry, the riches, the, the money that people bury with themselves. We take out of the coffins. Um, we take them out uh, and we flay them because uh, everyone knows the fungus inside. Uh, so, once we get the fung out of them, we just have this flat, flayed out uh, sort of body there. And uh, what we do with that is we just uh, cook that up uh, and serve it in McDonald's's. Uh, that's actually the secret special uh, burgers that they use at a McDonald's is uh, fungeless uh, dead pets. Um, so not only do we take the fung out of them and turn them into cryptocurrency, but we also get actual real money by selling the husk, the corpse husks to McDonald's to, to turn into uh, hamburgers. Uh, next slide, please. Now, of course, there's going to be risks to mining cryptocurrency. Um See, I don't I don't know if I wanted to put this one on here. Uh, it's not actually bad for the environment. Um, this is only for people who don't quite know what they're doing. Um, mm. If you don't fill your holes back up, um, yes, it's bad for the environment because lots of deer and uh, larger animals, sometimes people fall into the holes um, that are left when people don't fill their holes up after taking the bodies out. Um, and that's not great. But for the most part, you know, for people who are responsible with it, uh, fill the holes back up, plant some plant some uh, flowers, plant some some pollinators, plant some uh, dandelions, uh, get get the bees fed and and we take all of those corpses out of the ground. Uh, which are bad for the environment. Uh, but when you have people who don't care quite so much are just in it for a quick buck, they're going to leave the holes. Um, hard on the human body, uh, slave labor. Look, you got to not spend money to make money. So sometimes you get some kids, you, you know, you get some of these old babies that that people don't want anymore. Um, and you make them dig up the graves. Uh, you make them flay the bodies and take the fung out of them. 
and you have them, you know, strap backpacks full of the flayed out skin to sell to the McDonald's. Um, it, it's it's just something, you know, it, if you had adults doing that stuff, you would have to pay them. But if you take the old babies, <laughs> they don't need anything other than, you know, a, a, a bottle of milk once a week. Uh, now, you might awaken a vengeful spirit or a revenant. Uh, that very rarely happens. Um, the vengeful spirits, they usually don't care what happens to them after they're already dead. Um, so it, it would take someone who was already like on the verge of becoming a vengeful spirit. They just needed that one last straw that breaks the camel's back. Um, so maybe one out of 30 are going to turn into a revenant. They're pretty easy to take care of. I, I know a guy if you, if you find one. Um, now, the Hobby Lobby will try to lock it away in their weird Bible museum. As everyone knows, uh, the back of each Hobby Lobby has uh, a Bible museum with actual stuff from Bible times, such as, you know, parts of Jesus. Uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant is in the one that is in Maryland. Um, it's close to Baltimore. Um, they have one that has the, the cup, um, and there's also a Hobby Lobby. You have to be careful with this because one of the Hobby Lobbies actually has the gold, uh, jewel encrusted, uh, goblet that if you drink out of it, it won't give you a mortal life. It will make you, uh, turn to dust and bones and then fly away. Um, so you do have to be careful about which Hobby Lobbies you go to for your Bible museum needs. Uh, next slide, please. Now, here are the most valuable cryptocurrencies. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Um, this, this graph that you're looking at right here is actually six seconds of March 13th, 2018. Um, and since then, it has gone up and down. Cryptocurrency is the least stable thing you can ever invest in. Um, and that's what makes it so cool. Um, everybody loves, everybody loves taking chances. Um, and really, you can spend a thousand dollars on one of these uh, crypto funge coins uh, that are made from dead pets and and body parts, um, and it'll be worth six cents in forty minutes. Or you could spend three cents on one, and it'll be worth six hundred thousand dollars in a month. Um, but that one that's worth six hundred thousand dollars in a month. It, could also six seconds later uh, be worth negative seven hundred dollars. Um, it it's just the way it goes. You just either have to hold on to it or sell it off right away, depending on how you're feeling that day. Um, next slide, please. Uh, now, I don't know why I added this. Um, cryptocurrency versus fiat currency uh it has nothing really to do with anything that we've talked about um cryptocurrency is digital uh no weight except for that funged token uh that you do get expressing that you do in fact own cryptocurrency um it's passive income uh since you have to have so so many uh graphics cards going at once and you have to put air conditioners on them so that they don't overheat you have to put fans on them um depending on your rig you might want to put it in a refrigerator uh so your computer is going to go burr um and it's cool to buy stuff with bones obviously um if you're like me, I don't even buy stuff with my funge tokens because I like to have, I like to own the bones themselves. Um, so for me, it's, it's more of a collectibles thing. Um, now fiat currency is made up by the government. 
Uh, it's made up by the government of Sweden. Um, it's inconvenient. It weighs like more than two tons. Who can carry that around in their wallet? Um, and it's dead last in Consumer Reports metrics. Uh, so it's not even a contest. Uh, we're we're talking about phone money. Uh, so throw your fiat away if you have one. Uh, just throw it right in the garbage with your old babies and uh, invest in some cryptocurrency. Next slide, please. What it's, I mean, I'm a crypto boss, obviously. Um, I have people all through my downline uh, selling my funged, my funged tokens. Um, so I am the crypto boss. Um, and as you're in more danger of losing money, uh, the politeness has to go up because what people don't realize is the more polite you are, the more likely people are going to buy your bullshit. Uh, they're going to buy your, uh, completely worthless, uh, besides the fact that they're cool, made up of ground dead bodies and, and pets and stuff. Um, but you want to get the actual money, for your bullshit money, um, which is really the goal of cryptocurrency is to turn your fake money into real money, which is also fake money, but real in a different way. Um, so really all you have to do is be more polite and then you're in more danger of, um, making more real money. Next slide, please. Now in conclusion, you can take the you can take the funge uh, that you get out of these bodies um, and you can do kind of anything with it. They don't have to go into these crypto coins. They don't have to be turned into uh, funge tokens. Uh, you can turn them into a nasal spray that you can spray up your nose and since it's made out of dead bodies uh they're mummified they're they're uh they're already dead um you so you can just huff the spirit of the person whose body you took the funge out of um and use it for yourself um a lot of people don't realize that crypto bros crypto bosses like myself um, are actually immortal because of the fact that we are in contact with the spirit and the souls of so many dead people. Um, it's just keeping us young. Um, it's like, you know how in the old days they used to take the blood of children and inject it into their veins, uh, the adrenochrome, uh, the, the politicians would do that. Um, but that's old shit, man. You can't use the, the old babies. They, their stuff wears off. You got to take the, the entire spirit of the person and get it into yourself. That's how you stay young forever. And again, I shouldn't be saying this shit because so many people are going to be after me. <clears throat> But the good news is, since nobody watches this show, nobody's going to have any idea that I said any of it. So, you know, uh, the Illuminati is real. Um, the Earth is, in fact, flat. Um, there's a dome over top of it. And uh, the reptilians, uh, they do run the entire Earth. Uh, and the Earth is actually the only thing in the entire universe. Uh, God is right outside of the firmament. And uh, he's telling everybody uh, how to live. There's no heaven. There's no hell. There's just this. Um, and those are all facts. And again, who wow. cares? Nobody's going to see this. It's just the four of you. And uh, I know you're not talking because nobody listens to any of you either. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. And uh, does anybody have any questions for me? Uh, yes, I saw Jason's hand go up first. First off, I want to say that last slide, I'm glad I'm not the only one with a nasal spray addiction. So uh, thank you for sharing that. It makes me feel less you know, singular. 
And my my question is a two part question. And mm -hmm. from the beginning of your presentation, like questions came. And my two part question is: Who is Rusty? Why are we blaming him? And do you think it's crypto is to blame that Tales from the Crypt is not on HBO Max? Um, the Illuminati is to blame for uh, Tales from the Crypt not being on HBO Max. Uh, they don't want you to know. They own all of the VHS copies of the series of Tales from the Crypt. And what they're trying to do is drive the prices up so that they can um, sell you the VHS copies of Tales from the Crypt. Uh, that's how they keep the One World government uh, going. Uh, Rusty is, in fact, uh, the head of the Illuminati, um, and he's the one who um, is keeping Tales from the Crypt away from you. Uh, he's also the one that gets all of the episodes taken off of YouTube as soon as they go up there. Um, he has Tales from the Crypt on lockdown. Not even I can get a copy of it without paying for it. Thank you. Uh, yes, Smart Zach. Um, first off, thank you very much for giving this uh, very passionate and um, semi-annoyed presentation. Uh, now, for those who are uh, allergic to fungus, what would you say for the nasal spray uh, for that group of people? Well, they do make... Uh, I don't know if you don't understand what the fung is. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with fungus. Mm -hmm. um, there, I mean, depending on the body, uh, the state of decomposition, how long it's been in the ground, sometimes there will be um fungus in there mm -hmm. but uh they can pasteurize the fung and oh. that will kill off all of the spores so if you can find a a pasteurized uh version of the fung nasal spray you can totally that's fine for people who have uh sensitivity towards fungus excellent thank you any more questions mm -hmm. uh bob um, thank you for the presentation. I guess this is more a personal question, but uh, mm -hmm. the bear market's really hitting you right now, isn't it? Uh huh. No, that's a question. You feeling good, okay, buddy? Good question. Like bear market, like just always going. I I'm in a bunch of finance like subreddits, so just never mind. I answer my okay. own question. All right. Um, that was pointless. Uh, Zach. Now, if you're taking these uh, reptiles out of the ground and you're taking the fungus out of them and you're selling these fungus coins to people, how is that different than actual money? Um, it's different from actual money because the government doesn't have anything to do with it. It's all private. It's all privately owned um, fung and the coins that we take that we make out of the fung uh the the nasal spray you can only buy with with crypto so what we're doing is we are taking people out of the ground um turning them into currency and turning them into nasal sprays to make you immortal that you can only buy with cryptocurrency. So we're just double fucking you um, sure. because we don't pay anything for the, we don't pay anything for the corpses or the pets or the jewels or the gold. Um, we don't even pay to, to extract that stuff because it's all done with the old baby uh, who we don't pay. Um, yeah. So it's all free for us. The free corpses, free pets, free jewels, free gold, um, free labor, and mm. we're just selling it to you for ridiculous prices. Okay. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Uh, if it didn't, uh, Jason. Yeah, I got a question. So on the, the table that you showed us earlier, you said it's like 13 seconds within a day, but at the bottom yes. of it, it's, set, it's separated by days. And I'm just wondering what that meant. And then my second part to this question is speaking of double fucking you were mentioning filling holes and are you talking about every hole in the 
the world or just certain ones? I need that just, for my notes. Just the holes that we take the bodies out of. I'm Thank sorry you. if you took that sexually. Um, I mean, we do have huge orgies. Did you ever see um, the movie Society? Oh, it's much like that. There's a shunting. Everybody's just everybody just turns into one amorphous humanoid blob of uh, just sweat and juices. And mm -hmm. it's uh, quite frankly disgusting. Uh, but the days since explosion that what that means is the days since the explosion of crypto. Um, and oh. this is just in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> Um, it, it's, it's a very, it looks like it's a lot of time, but in reality, it's just a couple of seconds. Mm, nice. Um, I have time for one more question and it's well, going to be, uh, at Bob from custodial. Thank you. Um, just really quick. You seem like a real expert and I was wondering if your thoughts on the phrase girls just want to have fun. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. I mean, uh, we actually do have a question from the audience. Uh, if we just want to skip uh, over that last one, I guess okay. I was only allotted one question per. Year. Yeah, and well, you really uh, and you wasted uh, it on the first presentation. I I will um answer your question real quick Ooh. though. Um, it's hard for anyone but girls, uh, to be crypto bosses. Um, I actually had to work my way up. Um, it was I, the amount of people that I had to destroy, um to get to where I am today is ridiculous and it is almost all girls. Um, and when I say girls, I do mean uh, old babies. Um, they, they do cannibalize their own with uh, the unpaid labor. Um, okay. I have one question from the audience. Yeah. Uh, Blue Shoot Nick says, Mr. Colby, how do you respond to accusations of quackery and reaction to the article and the rise in cases of digital Lyme disease being connected to crypto ticks, which some have called a literal joke? Well, I mean, it is a literal joke. Uh, all of those things were written by a satire site. Um, it's just it's one of those things where a satire site writes something and in the days that we live in you can't tell the difference between satire and real life so people took it too seriously um and really made something out of nothing um uh, it seems as though mr blue shoes nick um is one of those idiots who has no idea uh what reality actually is um, and I'm sorry for him, mm. but he got taken in by some satire. Well, that was gorgeous, Mr. No Jokes Colby. Uh, keep in mind that all of the views of Mr. Colby are not the same as those of PowerPoint presentation, and you should take any hole filling with fungus at your own discretion. Uh, thank you very much. Now we're going to get on with our very last ado, which because of a contest, we have Mr. Bob from Custodial on. Now, if we can get the producers to take off this last PowerPoint slide. Let's see. Let's get that off of here real fast. Oh, perfect. And let's ask the producers if they can get up the other slide. Thank you. I don't know why they don't listen to me. Bob from Custodial, please. All right. Uh, yes. Um, wow. Great to be up here finally. You know, normally they shoo me out when the show starts. Um, but now I'm on the stage. I'm talking about crypto. It's not the best financial tiptoe. Um I, and I know that I didn't used to be a janitor in my entire life. Um, I was an investment banker, actually, uh, in the early 2000s before the housing bubble burst. And I invested in a lot of houses in the bubble burst. And I invested in a lot of dot coms before that in the bubble burst. And I thought, you know what? Third time's a charm. So I invested in a lot of crypto. And so far, I only get I only become destitute once every three years. Um, mm -hmm. And right now I'm on the bottom swing of that. So it's only up here for all Bob from custodial. Um Let's, let's talk about crypto today and what exactly it means to a lot of people and why it may not be the best financial tiptoe, but instead your whole toe. Next slide, please. Now about me, uh, the title of my favorite meme, it's probably the one with the guy who's doing like the, he does like that. I, um, I don't know that it has a title, but it's it like, 
it's a guy doing this and he put the words on it and it has a top and the bottom text and he's wearing like a hat. Um, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good one. Um, they usually use it for like embarrassing situations. It's really funny. Um, if you mm. find it, send some to me. Cause I read all of the ones that I can find so far. Uh, the author of my wedding vows was Stephen King. Um, not the author. Um, he was a fellow investment banker of mine when I worked for, uh, Hammerschmidt, uh, financial, um, and he was an actuary. So I figured, you know what, this guy's probably pretty good with words because, you know, he has to deal with numbers all the time and you write numbers down and you write words down. So I had him write my vows and I mean, you know, she left me a while ago. So lesson learned, I guess, uh, movie producer, I respect, um, redacted why I don't dance. Uh, I actually have a club foot. Um, the last job I worked was at a cement factory and I was there one day when the factory shut down due to a strike and the vat of cement like fell down. It missed me. Um, but I was born with a clubbed foot. So I was the last one out of the building. Um, that, that's me. Um, no, I'm just glad to be here. Let's go to the next slide. All right. All right. So cool. All right. Back now that you know me a little bit, let's go know the facts. Let's get back to them. Um, I'm going to read this word for word at the pace, which I'm comfortable with a digital currency in which transactions are verified and records maintained. Okay. Uh, something about cryptography and authority. Okay. Back to the lies. Um, North, <laughs> North American free trade agreement. Um, you know, as an investment banker, I don't really worry about trade. I just like watch the numbers go up. And then when the numbers go down, I go stand on the ledge of my building and contemplate things for a little while until the numbers come back up. And um, I mean, NAFTA, like, I don't know, just affects the people who clean my apartment when I don't live there. Um, which, I mean, I don't have an apartment right now, but if I, when I, when I get an apartment, when the numbers go back up, I'm going to get an apartment and there'll be someone cleaning it. And then we'll talk about NAFTA. Um, at, at the next conference I, I join. Let's go to the next slide. That's proof. Uh, what is proof? It's a good question because we're living in a post-truth world. Uh, so proof is effectively useless. But my personal experience shows that proof is just in the pudding. So if you go to the fridge at work and Jimmy brought his chocolate pudding again and he didn't put his name on it, it's been there for like, you know, all day, even though he had his lunch, so he's not eating it. You can go and just help. You know, have a spoonful of pudding. I, I haven't eaten all day, so I'm going to help myself to some of that pudding, and I could find the proof there. Um, and I guess that's proof that like you know numbers go down, and you get on your hard times, and then eventually you'll numbers will go back up, and just like the skin on pudding, the numbers, um, the numbers look better when you look past the skin. Yeah, that's the proof. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next. I thought this would go better. Um, here's a graph. Anyway, here's a graph of no more proof. Um, now, crypto, I like to measure. I, when I was an investment banker, I like to measure my investments in two axes. One was how crazy the investment was, and one was how hot the investment was. When I say hot, I mean the type of hot that makes you say hot, not hot. I need to emphasize it. Um, and there was a very important scale on which I invested. Um, we started at a four. Because I woke up at 4 a.m. and meditated for an hour. You got to get that Sigma grind set. And as the day goes on to 10 o'clock, because I would only work for six hours in a day and then I'd get drunk at 11 o'clock in the morning and do some coke, um, the crazy hotline would go up. And if I stopped early, it was a no-go and I wouldn't invest. There was a fun zone. And then over, that's the danger zone. And that's stuff like electric cars were in like the fun zone for a while. And now they're in the danger zone because the batteries are exploding randomly. Um, and then da Dather? Dather? Is that what it says? Detaher? I don't know. I've never been to Europe. Um, but there's marriage <laughs> material and then there's unicorns down there too. Um, and you wouldn't you would never invest in a unicorn. That's stuff like getting into Bitcoin back in like 2002 when it costs like fractions of a penny each. And then you lost it again because your wallet got stolen and you lost it again when your wallet got stolen and the blockchain crashed or something, just like it crashed in 2008 for me. But um yeah, well, just like numbers, the line goes up between hot and crazy. So keep an eye out on your on your Bitcoin. Let's go to the next slide. It's getting a little hot in here. Um, but you know, it's not all seriousness. Um, so 
sorry, hold on. I'm just, I'm nervous. Um, but a book that I really liked that taught me a lot about investing was Oink on the Farm. Um, and I learned about investing because I did the opposite of what those animals did because those animals don't invest. So I invested and I succeeded. Mm. Um, and that was the discovery I made from Oink on the Farm. Um, as a bonus, it had 10 noisy farm sounds like a tractor turning over and a kid falling down a well. So that was really cool. Um, I think that's all I got for now. Let's go to the next one. I don't, I didn't, I didn't know the topic of the talk. Um, when I joined up, is that question for me? No, no. Okay. Sorry. I'm new. I haven't done this before. (laughs) Um, okay. Now that I have your attention, I really want to talk about my pet project because when you're an investor and you got to put your money somewhere, you got to invest enough in charity that the IRS thinks that you only made $15,000 last year. It's really easy because my buddies who work in the government have intentionally defanged the IRS so they can only go after low level offenders. Uh, so my pet project that I put a lot of money in is increasing the annual deaths from smoking. You can see the, <laughs> you can see the numbers here. Um, we're talking about numbers. Let's get them up. <sighs> Shit. Uh, I didn't think I'd be talking about this too much, but um, I mean, my life was numbers for a long time and they all went down. So I'm trying to get numbers up. So if you want to buy some cigarettes out in the parking lot, I'll be there after this. Uh, let's go to the next slide. My conclusion. Um, I feel like I kind of lost track of myself in there some at some point. So I guess like, just ride the rocket to the moon and if it crashes and burns um make sure you leave like contradicting wills so that way you're like next of kin have to argue over who gets everything you left you uh and sometimes you might just be left with a recliner and a washing machine um and you know they turned the water off in my apartment so when i had one so we had to like put a bucket go out to the hose and spigot and put the water in the washing machine with the kid for a bath and then just manually crank it from the back um, so, uh, invest in crypto and you probably won't have that happen to you. Just put all of your money into a cryptocurrency. It's very volatile. It's a great idea. And, um, I think that's it. I think that's all I came with. I don't think I have another one. Oh no. Crypto. Not the best. <clears throat> Wait, no, I did this one. Okay. I'm done. Oh, Excellent. Excellent. Uh, now it's pretty obvious why we don't do this competition very often, but Bob from custodial, uh, the sweepstakes winner. Does anybody have any questions about his knowledge of crypto pudding skin and maybe the dot com failure of 2010? Um, Michael, no jokes. Oh, do I? I don't call on him. Okay. Well, you don't get to talk anymore. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, actually this this question is for uh zach uh you you're the keynote speaker you put this uh conference together Mm -hmm. um this is a very important conference uh with a lot of very serious uh consequences why did you let a contest winner be on this panel it doesn't make any sense yeah it seems like you're not taking this seriously well, in all fairness, he did win the contest to be on the uh, alternate Earth uh, episode because he does have this crazy theory. Uh, the only problem is that uh, apparently one of his aunts uh, contracted the third virus of COVID and he wasn't able to make that recording. And he said, I know everything about everything. And so that's why I brought him on to this one. And okay, I'm sorry. Well, can, Honestly, can to everyone, we, I apologize. Yeah. Can we not have any more contests? Because this is ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, and now, now we know. Uh, Bob, I'm a big fan. Um, my question is, um, what are you drinking right now? <laughs> oh, I'm not drinking anything. Oh, am I allowed to talk? Yeah. Okay. I'm not drinking anything right now. I'm answering your question. I was drinking vodka. <laughs> okay. Makes sense. <laughs> okay. We actually have a question from the audience. Mr. Blue Shoe Nick says, Bob, comma, how do you feel about dismembered men in the ocean and their lack of pudding? Does inflation only leave room for pudding? Am I allowed to talk? Yeah, you can answer this. Um, uh, I mean, I I don't feel any particular way about dismembered men in the ocean. Um, I'm sorry they're there unless they want to be. Like, if it's on their own terms, that's cool. I hope they're not dismembered by someone else. Um, I've had to clean that up here in this conference room, and it's, let me tell you, it's 
the ocean would probably putting the ocean in here would probably make that really easy. Um, does inflation only leave room for pudding? Um, you know, it's we used to do a thing at parties at my investment firm where you would get a like a party balloon and a bowl of pudding. Sorry, I'm tearing up a little. It's been a while. Um, and you'd put the balloon in the pudding and like inflate it, and then just everybody laughs and the camaraderie was, camaraderie was really really something i, I enjoyed <laughs> they're all in prison now everybody i just need to apologize uh we had three amazing guests lined up for today and uh bob from custodial is the only one that could show up so um yeah he obviously didn't know a whole lot about cryptocurrency he actually does sell nfts which are just very hard pieces of pudding skin uh you can find those in his lucy's out back of any kind of uh circle k that you can find on the east coast um but let's see i guess if we have no more questions for mr bob from custodial do we have any more questions I, out there i have one why oh, did you shit. why did you why me why am I your golden, I have that golden cow question. to sacrifice and come yeah. down that mountain? Well, you got to listen to the after show to get all that. Oh, okay. Well, oh, obviously, thank you, uh, Bobbert from Custodial. And uh, let's see. And now, with all the presentations given, each member of the panel will indicate which speaker they believe deserves to win the $50,000 grant from some nobody's university, as well as the collector's nostalgia prize that one of our Patreon members thrifted to us. Now, I'm going to ask each panelist to please, on the count of three, hold up the number of the the presentation that you think won for tonight. Now I'm going to put them in order of how we went. So obviously I went first. Uh, Mr. Jason went second. Uh, we have, okay, that's whatever. <laughs> we have no jokes going in third. And Bobberts from Custodial is coming in four. So on the count of three, hold up a number for the same presentation that you think should win. And three, two, one. Nice. It looks like um, Mr. Jason Taylor from Three Jason. Geeks nobody wanted. told you I wasn't eligible as the guest, right? Okay, so it's a three way tie, but it looks oh. like Mr. Jason Taylor from Three Geeks, because it is a three way tie, wins this one. So we're going to go ahead and send over this size medium 1981 Camaro sweatshirt and $50,000 grant money over to uh, the P.O. box that you gave Bob earlier that he happens to find out. And that's awesome. So thank you very much for everything, all of our presenters. Um, now, before we go and give away our, uh, or do our goodbyes and where people can find you, let's see. Now, Bob, being the loser of this one, will you please tell us what our next week's uh, presentation is going to be on? The true history behind the Monopoly Man. <laughs> The true history behind the Monopoly Man. Please tune in next week to get that one. Uh, let's see. We have Mr. Michael Nojos Colby. Where can people hear you? Well, if you want jokes from me, uh, you can go over to Jack Billings Presents on an Apartment Complex, uh, a very strange scripted comedy show uh, where we do all sorts of jokes. Um, you can also find me on Generation Clash and... Uh, award-winning podcast no time to binge uh which is a, a comedy show where we watch the first episode and the last episode of a series and then make up what happens in the middle much like what we do here except it's funnier because we have uh b highland who's the funniest one of the four of us yeah, very true. Uh, Bob from Custodial, where can people hear your other alternative voices? Uh, listen to all the Some Nobody stuff Zach and I do. Talking Upstream, Twitching Upstream on Tuesdays. Come hang out with us and talk to us in chat. Uh, obviously, PowerPoint Showdown live here Mondays. And then pre-recorded stuff drops on YouTube on Thursdays. Most Mondays, you know, life takes a toll. Uh, uh. I hate this character. <laughs> uh, no, I'm done with this character. <laughs> Jesus, this is a bummer. Uh, okay. I, yeah, I think that I think the character has overtaken you. <laughs> yeah, uh, you no. are... Some nobodies, Silicon Angels, twitching upstream, talking upstream. He talked about no time to binge. Uh, choose your own adventure. Choose your own. Create your own pod venture. It's been a while. I'm rusty. Um, <laughs> the Illuminati. Oh right. Ah, uh, look at that reincorporation. Uh, yeah, come come hang with some nobodies. And I'm on Twitter at Vorpal underscore words. Hell yeah. Jason from Three Geeks, where can people hear your beautiful voice? 
I gotta say, Bob's presentation was like watching a David Lynch movie. Like, it doesn't exactly make sense, but you're mesmerized by everything that is happening, and you think it's brilliant when it's over. I, you guys can find me every Sunday at noon on the Three Geeks podcast. We do it live, and follow me at Three Geeks J and at Three Geeks Podcast. Awesome. And I have been smart Zach Wiseman. You can find me everywhere that Bob the Custodial says words. Uh, and as my payment for being keynote speaker, I get to tell someone to give me the slogan for our show. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it to Jason. So Jason, will you please tell everybody what the slogan for this show is? Just paper, burn it. Paper, burn it. Let's get out of here. Trees are weak to be strong. They're always green. There's no non-greenness in a tree. Even when they're covered in white, they're still green underneath. Trees, like people... <clears throat> Thank you for watching PowerPoint Showdown. Today's winner will receive a $50,000 grant courtesy of some nobody's Patreon. Congratulations on your win! Join us next week for another showdown. Thanks for providing that big, 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 big prize, guys.